Bulaginaka, my name is Lekia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in in the news tonight, Kapiti contest under the Sadilpa banner in the 2018 elections. 245 teaching positions have been filled. And Fiji Building Designers Association conducts first AGM. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. FBC News can now confirm that the current leader of opposition, Rote Mumu Kepa, will be contesting this year's general election under the Sadelpa banner. With many speculations about her joining the party, Kepa confirmed that she has been given the green light to stand for what may be her last election. Aliki Mbia with the story. It's now official. The Social Democratic Liberal Party has given the approval for opposition leader Rote Mumu Kepa to be one of their provisional candidates. Yes, I have sent in my application and they have given me, uh, they have given me space as a provisional candidate. In an interview on social media in New Zealand, party leader Sitiveni Rambuka says Kepa followed the same procedures as other candidates before being selected. She allowed herself to be interviewed. She applied, she followed all the procedures uh, to be a candidate. And she had come down that far. She was a party leader, she is the leader of the opposition, but she still wants to uh, be treated like everybody else, so she submitted to the procedures laid out by the party. However, Rambuka is unhappy of media reports that is trying to create instability within the party. It's a very subjective one aimed at uh, driving a wedge between the two, the uh, leader of the opposition and the party leader of Sadalpa. Sadalpa is expected to announce the rest of the provisional candidates soon. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Despite battling tropical cyclone Winston and other setbacks in 2016, our foreign reserves were recorded at close to $2 billion. While tabling the Reserve Bank of Fiji's 2016 annual report in Parliament this week, Chair of Standing Committee on Economic Affairs Lorna Eden said the 2016 foreign reserves were equi equivalent to five and a half months of retained imports. Rachel Nart reports. Foreign reserves consist of any foreign currency held by the central bank, including foreign banknotes, bank deposits, bonds, treasury bills and other government securities. Fiji's reserve for 2016 was regarded as outstanding. This is highly commendable in light of the fact that the International Monetary Fund states that benchmark of three months is quite sufficient. The report also revealed that on the world ranking of ease of doing business, Fiji averaged 73 between 2008 to 2017. We need to take this uh, seriously. You know, our ranking uh, has gone down uh, from 2016, uh, from 97 uh, to 101. There's no doubt that uh, the ease of doing business overall uh, needs to be improved. I think every country in the world continuously seeks to improve the ease of doing business. Of course, we have a much bigger task ahead of us, uh, but we believe it's all coming together, notwithstanding the fact that the manner, the methodology that was actually used to measure the ease of doing business was actually flawed and the World Bank has actually agreed with that. But that does not in any way negate the fact that we still need to do some work in that respect. The impacts of post-cyclone activities resulted in the agriculture and construction sector declining, which led to a downwards revision in projected growth in 2016 from 3.5 percent to 2 percent. Rachel Nath, FBC News. 245 new teaching positions for primary, secondary and special schools have been filled. Opposition MP Mikhail Leawere asked the minister about the progress of the recruitment. According to Leawere, the government had announced in the 2017-2018 budget that 200 new teachers will be recruited by the ministry. Uh, Madam Speaker, out of the 200 uh, new primary school teachers, all 200 positions have been filled. 189 have been posted to primary schools um, in different parts of Fiji. I've got a list here, the Honourable Member wants it. Um, but 11 of them actually have been uh, posted to special schools. As you know, we have special schools in Fiji. 
um, uh, throughout Fijian. The special school driver of the speaker, uh, Nasabu Special School, Fiji School for the Blind, Silver Special School, South Tavuni Primary School, Nora Fraser Special School, Sunshine Special School, Hilton Early Intervention Center, Bar School for Special Education, Nora Fraser Special School, again, uh, Singapore Special School. And out of the uh, 50 new secondary school teacher positions, Madam Speaker, uh, 45 actually have been filled. The other five uh, have not been filled because they are looking specifically for uh, teachers in specified areas, uh, in particular in the areas of uh, maths, physics, computers, biology, chemistry, and home economics, and we hope to have them filled up soon. In a bid to improve the quality of structural designs, the Fiji Building Designers Association conducted their first annual general meeting in Suva today. Minister for Infrastructure Parveen Kumar says that it's pivotal to have such meetings to see how they can improve their work. Kritika Kumar reports. A building designer plays a crucial role in laying the foundation of any infrastructure. Hence, it's paramount they receive the required assistance from government in furthering their scope. This is no doubt contributes to the building our country, Fiji, and all nation building contributions, especially in this fundamental area of buildings for our nation, deserves to be recognized. Kumar says this AGM creates a great platform for new designers to enhance the services they provide. Creating a platform of empowerment to enhancing capability and capacity of its members to provide quality of services and have an influence on style and aesthetics in the building and design industry. The association is challenged with many barriers from authorities and limited with their opportunities due to substandard work carried out by some designers. However, this prompted the members to join forces to operate with improved outcomes. These two groups met together in December 2016 and had a meeting at Yatulau building where it was decided to form an association which would have looked after the interest of designers and technicians in the building industry. The Minister reassured the association that a number of training sessions and awareness campaigns will be held to upskill these designers. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Still to come, new project to monitor governance system launched in Sabsavo. And colour coding of taxi number plates to modernise services. Stay with us. Bula, Kera Mai Sinatoka, Kera Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the radio Fiji One and Domo Iviti. I have a Narinche, Utikumination Vutipola, Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Radio Fiji One and Domo Iviti. I have a Silly Tali, Nabura Ramai Naomani, Nandoma. A new project to monitor the governance system that already exists in our communities has been launched in Savu Savu. The Yanra Yanravi Accountability and Monitoring Program is a EU-funded project being implemented by ADRA Fiji in the Count Rove. Eleanor Turangavi reports the project will run for three years. The overall objective of the Yanra Yanravaki Program is to improve capacities of civil society organizations in Fiji to foster good governance and accountability. The USP coming in to capacitate or train the people in uh governance in accountability and uh, trans, uh, transparency. Commissioner Northern Chavez over there says there has never been work done in this area before and government fully supports the initiative. I'm glad to know that one of the main focus of this project is to coordinate the CSOs and CBOs who are engaged in the community. Help them to be more organized and to establish good networking and framework which will be an information sharing platform. The Andre and Ravi program will be implemented over a three-year period covering the 134 communities in the Kaunrobe from Wailebu to Yavata as well as about 30 secondary schools. The project will build a space for CSOs to network. It will also assist unregistered CSO to register and it will 
create a platform for CSOs in Van Walevu with the support of the Fiji Council of Social Services. At the end of the three years, the program aims to ensure that all CSOs in Von Nolevo are recognized, they have a voice, and they are transparent. Ellen Oturangibu, FBC News. Energy Fiji Limited, together with the government, is working towards getting individuals to generate electricity and sell it back to the grid. Public Enterprise yeah. Minister Ayan Said Kayum says in order to achieve this, requirements involving legal changes and pricing mechanisms need to be carried out. Said Kayum says EFL is also working on establishing standalone energy generation systems whereby rural areas will receive electricity off the grid. The minister says this initiative is being carried out with the assistance of the Leonardo <coughs> DiCaprio Foundation. If your entrepreneurship skills are really good, you can actually cover your entire roof with panels. Now, and then you can, the electricity you generate from that, you can actually sell it to FEA. You can use some of it. If you have any excess, you can sell it to FEA. The color coding of number plates for taxis will help improve and modernize services within Fiji's taxi industry. Speaking in Parliament, Minister for Transport Praveen Bala says these plates will enable enforcement officers to easily identify and monitor taxis operating within a zone. Bala says this will be beneficial for both the industry and its customers. He says with the new plates, taxi services will be better managed and meet the demand present in each of the 34 zones. We had some legal taxis. We have got a lot of cases. We have got some taxi operators who are operating in other areas well away from the basis that they were given, thus depriving their customers an accessible and reliable taxi services. A variety of short stories about Fijians of Indian descent have been compiled into a book called Koikis Sabatao and was launched last night. One of the authors, Praveen Chandra, says it was important to write the book as it will help Fijians of Indian descendants be well-versed with Fijian Hindi. Savarat Tambor reports. A person can be easily identified by where they are from just by speaking their dialect. The author of the book says it's great to see people speaking Fijian Hindi. However, it needs to be on paper to help younger generations. Just because Fiji Hindi, the language that we are using in Fiji, we speak in it every day but literature wasn't available so we couldn't propagate it no one could read the stories that people had you know so now people can look at this and say ah oh, there's a there's a uh, there's a book with uh, is written in fiji hindi and uh, and uh, and enjoy the the stories in there chief guest ashwin raj says that this exercise is creating a much more equal society when we begin to respect each other i mean to me it's just wonderful when I hear my Itoke brothers and sisters speak in, in Fiji Hindi, I feel at home. And they feel at home the moment we speak each other's language. I mean, and our Fiji, by, Fiji Hindi, by the way, also includes Itoke words. Chandra started writing the book Koikisa Batao in March last year. He intends to write more storybooks similar to this one in the future. Savera Tambua, FBC News. People around the world are looking forward to the much-anticipated royal wedding that will begin tonight. The royals took to the streets today in London just to chat with the public. Anna Ravula reports. The royal siblings greeted adoring fans outside of Windsor Castle as they shared their pre-wedding excitement with the public. Prince Harry and elder brother Prince William mingled with crowds waving Union Jack flags. Royal fans have flocked to the streets of Windsor as the finishing touches were made ahead of the royal wedding. Seven-year-old Megan O'Shea from Holly Park near Maidenhead was amongst those that got the chance to chat with Harry. The prince pointed out the H in the young girl's name, like Megan Markle's, and she said he remarked, is that like the one I'm going to marry? There's not very many Megans with an H around. Little Megan said, I think she's very nice. Ahead in sports, Nandranga upsets Naita Siri in Skipper Cup competition. And RKS celebrates sporting achievements, this and more coming up. I am Pramila Vairuku Reki Reki Se. Subha Meri Aak Khunti Hai, Toh Main Mirchi FM Sunti Hu. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बार टाउन के कैरियर ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट 
हाय मैं संध्या नारा रेफरी से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम सॉल्ट आई लव मिर्ची हम इस बीन तो कहता हूँ वो आके मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट Fiji's rugby giants Nandranga ended Neita series unbeaten run defeating them 15 to 14 in the fourth round of the Skipper Cup at Ratadakambao Park in Nosori. Neita series led 9-8 at the half time mark. Here are the highlights. The policeman at uh, nine miles at the mobile unit Kenny Douglas slops the first points over. 10 minutes of play gone. Douglas moves. Douglas strikes it. And it's over. And uh, Lutomalangi drives it, and it's over. So now, still the pressure on uh, uh, Naita Siri and Nandronga. Uh, it was Naita Siri that tipped it through. Nandronga go through Sevaloni Tawake. So we wait now for Ratunaisa Navuma to throw it into the line. Over the top it comes, and Nandronga right in front of the line. They go through over there. Whoa! What a play from Nandronga. Comes out quickly. Peniasi Ratu. Big pass out wide. They've got numbers out wide. Can they get the ball out? Out from Raloa and the try for Vetaya Tiko. Did he put it down? At the Kandavu Level School today celebrated their achievements of winning the Coca-Cola Games boys title and the World Youth Sanix Rugby Tournament in Japan. The Arden fans today took part in the gathering as the athletes and players were handed a certificate each. Luciana Tangidakimba reports. It was time to get together and mark the achievements by the athletes and rugby players of RKS. The Tai Levu based school won the Coca-Cola Games boys title after 21 years following their under-18 rugby team, securing the first ever win in Japan. And, uh, itself has really boosted the school, um, not only in sports, uh, even the students themselves have uh, raised their, um, their level, their standard uh, because of this, uh, this, this, this win. The boys from the Lena Kai Kai have now turned their focus in the upcoming Dean's competition. Our target is to retain the, 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 the six great trophies. That's our target. Uh, it's a challenge to us. Uh, now it's easy to win, but it's very, very hard to defend. They are the giants of school sports now. Apart from claiming all great trophy in Dean's competition last year, the school was also crowned the Rugby League champions earlier this year. Amazing the uh, hard work that the children have uh, given in into the training uh, day in and day out for the past 13 weeks, uh, culminating into the final in week 13. So uh, thanks to the school, to the school administration. With the cabinet full right now, we have to wait and see whether they can again reign supreme in the Dean's competition when it kicks off next month. Luciana Tangita Kimbao, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Kachi Rugby Competition was launched today with 32 teams competing for this annual event. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor says the competition will develop young players who will later represent Fiji in international competitions. Luciana Tangitakimbao once again. Developing any sport at grassroots level is important. The FRU CEO says that children must be nurtured at a very young age if they have any chance of playing at international level. The rugby union is committed in developing grassroots rugby. And we firmly believe that uh, if we have to have strong national teams at the uh, elite level, the Flying Fijians, the Fijian uh, Fiji Airways Man 7 team, we need to uh, focus on grassroots rugby and it starts from Kachi rugby. Event coordinator Owen Ratumai Koro says this year's competition will have a little twist. This year we get to play the national finals. Eh? So, apart from last year, they had it in the divisional wise. We only had the central teams playing in the national finals here. This year we hope to incorporate all the zones. Fiji Airways men's seventh player Alessio Nanduva has rated the competition highly. Good uh, uh, to have um, Kachi rugby in Fiji. Of course, it's uh, de develop all uh, develop uh, kids to come into high standard, and they can also have uh, scholarships in um, uh, New Zealand and Australia by playing here in uh, Fiji. 
Meanwhile, the Vodafone Kachi Rugby competition will continue for the next 10 weeks before the national finals in August. Luciana Tangida Kimbao, FBC Sports. The Lotoka football side is just a few steps away from creating history when they take on Team Wellington in the OFC Champions League final tomorrow. Lotoka assistant coach Anjanesh Prasant says nothing is impossible and is ready to play for their home crowd. Luciana Tangida Kimbao. The Lotoka football side is wary of the Wellington team and will take every minute as a challenge. All, all focused as, as Team Wellington. For this game, we, we know that uh, nothing is imp impossible for this game. And we have, we have worked out our plan uh, for the game tomorrow. And we are looking for a win. And in football, as I said, anything can happen. And to score seven goals is not impossible. We know it's, it's, it's a big task, but we are, we are focused uh, uh, to beat Team Wellington tomorrow. Lotaka football captain Benyamino Mate Nangara says there are no rooms for mistakes. Right now it's just to improve where we left off and uh, rectify our mistakes and we make sure that uh, we keep our heads together and play football. Team Wellington coach Kuzi Figuera says the ultimate goal is to win. There's a group of players here that have, you know, playing their second, third, fourth final, uh, and you know they're they're obviously desperately close. And you know, as, as Justin just pointed out, you know we're we're really ready and focused to to make sure we you know we we finish that job off. From Latoka. The Lotoka football side will host Team Wellington tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Lotoka's Churchill Park. Luciana Tangi the Kimbao, FBC Sports. The Fiji Gold Nasinu Netball Association started their knockout stages competition last night. More than 12 teams in the Nasinu and Suva Corridor were part of the competition. The Nasinu Association has now turned their focus to the national competition as they aim to be in top form with the team starting from the development grades. Secretary Seniani Lindua says this competition will enable selectors and officials to select top players to represent the club and later the national team. We'll have a couple of rounds until we finish in July, where we uh, trial out our teams. Then we'll um, form our three teams that will be taking uh, Nasinu Netball to uh, the IDC, uh, which is the national championship for Fiji Netball. Fiji-born Samu Karevi's late try was not enough for his Queensland Red side as they went down to the Hurricanes 38-34 to in the Super Rugby match last night. The Hurricanes were too strong for the Reds as they led 24-20 to in the halftime mark. The Broncos defeated the Roosters 28 points to 22 in the round 11 of the NRL match last night. Broncos winger, winger Jermaine Isako scored the winning try with two minutes left on the clock. Beautiful weather experience today. It was fine, apart from a few brief showers over the eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, it was fine, apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. Now, in the west for today, mainly fine with cool conditions at night. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy periods with few showers, and you can expect cool nights as well. All the way up north, cloudy periods with few showers and it will be a cold night for most areas. At sea, moderate easterly winds, moderate seas. For the tides, low tide will be at 9.01 p.m. with high tide at 3.32 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.26. Now for tomorrow, brief showers over the eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands. Isolated afternoon or evening showers are expected elsewhere. And as for Monday, some showers will be experienced. Recapping the main stories, Kepa to contest under the Sodelpa banner in the 2018 elections. 245 teaching positions have been filled. And Fiji Building Designers Association conduct its first AGM. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question. This week, we're asking if the 1987 Ramuka coup did not happen, would Fiji be a different place? You can visit our FBC website to answer. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. 
And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. मैं प्रमिला वायरुकु रेकी रेकी से सुबह मेरी आँख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफएम सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफएम इस नंबर वन इट्स सो हॉट हम लोग बार टाउन के केरिया ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारा रेकी से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते